You know, you do you want to go to heaven? I say, yes. Well, if I want to go to heaven, guess who else I want to go to heaven with me? My neighbor. Ah, hope that I got you. My, I, I, I want to go to heaven. I, I want a better life for myself. Now, guess if I want a better life for myself, guess who else I want to have a better life too? My neighbor. See how you see this idea? Oh, I want, you know, the best for myself. Hmm, guess who else if I want the best for myself? I want the best for my neighbor. See, that's the whole the idea of really, truly performing the things of, of being a Christian. But the, the topic of this message that, you know, God showed me this morning, pretty much, is about the reality of advancing others. Advancing others. It's the idea of that that the, the, of love that God wants to teach us that we're not about advancing ourselves, but it's about advancing others because the whole sequence of that idea of loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind. That I learned that in that loving God all with all, God start giving me all what I need to help others to advance see because it's not about me you know being a minister or a christian or on fire for god or you know what i'm saying it's not really to me about me being it to the place that i i it's all about others too to advance along with me see and the thing is the problem of course that's going on that unfortunately that the church and is the church system is a messed up to me that we think that it's about this competition you know they think this competition that we're competing to be better than each other we're in this competition system that i complain to the utmost way that is totally against the blueprint of what paul and and others put concerning the establishment of the church like you know you got these denominations and that, you know, you Baptist, I'm Methodist, I'm Catholic, whatever. You got these ideals of, a, of, of disagreeing with some other person. You know what I'm saying? That we're, and you got this ideal of we minister this way, you minister that way. I minister to the old, you minister to the youth. We got this, you know, all kind of crazy, you know, things that, that, the thing is, but the ideal, like, you know, I tell people, you know, how many churches are supposed to exist in the world? Everybody say many churches. Billions of people that answer that is looking at the whole game in a natural. And I come up to somebody that's looking at the game spiritual. How many churches are supposed to help make this world a better place? And out, and the spiritual person will say, one church, yes, one church, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one church, a church of oneness, a church of unity, unity of the spirit, unity of the faith, of, of somebody's unifying. That's when you're unifying. See, here's the thing I love about the ideal that, of course, Paul choose the body to make an example for the church is supposed to be a body. Every body part is supposed to come together. Like if Mac wants to go to New York, I'm in Florida. If I want to go to New York, uh, guess, and what if I say, well, I'm going to New York, but I'm going to leave behind my legs. I'm going to leave behind my feet, so my, my left foot. I'm going to leave behind my, my you know, my left arm, and the rest of it going to go to New York. You know what I'm saying? Doesn't make sense at all, right? Yes, it does. It's supposed to not make sense. But the thing is, the way the church is going right now, that it doesn't understand that, you know, that Paul established in Ephesians 3, that we can do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that we can ask we, but it says we, not 
um, we, your building, you know what I'm saying? But it's we as the body of Christ, as human beings that God has created to be in his image, not buildings to be created in his image, but us in our image, the body of Christ in our image, that when we come to understand that it's about each other, that I love it says in um, for uh, Romans 12, I, I encourage people to re read the whole Romans 12 chapter. It's unbelievable of what Paul has showed us supposed to be the image blueprint of every Christian. That, you know, that how we must esteem, admonish one another, do this with one another, you know what I'm saying? That we help advance one another. Now, I'm going to make this an example. You know, that uh, what are these, you know, um, these uh, two uh, friends, Bob and Bill. Bob and Bill wants to go to college. And... And they want to they want to go to college and they want to become uh, architects or something like that. Okay, now Bob. Now what if Bob is good at this area, uh, good at math, and Bill is good at and not good at science, but Bill is bad at math and but good at science. What now? Now watch this. They said that we want to graduate. And become uh, engineers together. Our desire is to graduate and become engineers. Watch this together. That's their set goal. That's their set that they're aiming after to do it together. What happens if Bob is not good at this, you know, area, and Bill is not good in that area? Bill will help Bob in that area, and Bob will help Bill in that area. That together they will accomplish and achieve whatever goal that works is what the idea of the church is supposed to be all about. That we supposed to help one another to advance one another concerning each and every community in each and every city to each and every state to each and every you know country across the world that we will be and do it as one. Not that this big church advance more better than the small church. There's to me, there's no such supposed to be no such thing of a big and a small church. All love them the same. All of them supposed to be one. We're supposed to be one together, helping to advance one another. That's what because Paul says we. You know, because they many preachers preach that as individuals you can do it seemingly abundantly or above all that I you know uh, uh, can do it. They that, but it says work it together in uh, us and you know concerning the church of Jesus Christ. If you read the next scripture now, and the thing is, is just that the Christianity is supposed to be about advancing one another that they can help better shine a light. To wherever they are, I'm in Bradenton, Florida. You at a different city. You at a different state. I'm about wanting to encourage you to show forth the gospel of Jesus Christ and shine where you are to help better advance the kingdom of God that we can all work together to come in agreement with the word of God to help better each other. Because I... Because that's what the church is supposed to be all about, advancing each other. And as much as we see that we advance each other, people should be gravitating to want to be a Christian, how better we are advancing other Christians to be Christians everywhere they go. People should be attracted by our how much we help better one another. Not how, how better we can gossip with one another, but share the gospel with one another. See what I'm saying? There shouldn't be no animosity or no, you know, you know negativity uh, 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 against each other. There should be no competition with each other in church. It's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? If that is the case. Because it's about advancing the whole body. Like I said, you know, the whole body, my whole body is supposed to go to New York. Not my, my, my pinky and my other arm or my wrist can't make it to New York. No, it's all about advancing as one. 
is the idea of what Christianity is supposed to be all about, that we advance others to become more like Jesus Christ, to be made in the image and likeness of God that we're created to be, to fulfill our purpose in life. And the purpose in life is to advance others. That I love about Christ, the ideal word of God concerning Christianity, but I don't like the performance that is going on in the church right now. That is about, oh, well, this big one here and doing this and this big one here doing that. And it's like, it's not true advancement. It's not true advancement when it's not coming together. It's not coming together as what it says in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter in the, 10, in the 9 and 10, that we're supposed to come to the fellowship of our Lord Jesus Christ, not the conferences or the, the big time revivals or the camp meetings. No, come into the fellowship that we become the same one mind and one with one judgment. We know the judgment of what God's word is true. This whole God's word, nothing but God's word. No uh, 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 preservatives of lies, of doctrine, or weight when of doctrine. No preservatives or you know nonsense whatsoever. It's just 100% word of God concerning a body that is one of the name. But we can't be one embracing these ideals of denominations and embracing these ideals of tradition, embracing these ideals of religion, embracing these ideals. This is not advancing. There's no advancement in that whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? There is only making it worse. And I try to tell people, the, this is, say Lucifer uh, and his angels divided heaven. They divide, Lucifer divided heaven. And guess what he's doing right now to the church? Yes, dividing it. So look, if you think you are doing, uh, about living for God, operating in this division, you're wrong. You know what I'm saying? The thing is, we're supposed to be unifying together. But if you of something that is bringing division, it's not of God. It's of the devil. It's just that simple. So the thing is, this is, but if we're going to be advancing and doing exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think, it's going to be about uh, the next chapter of that, Ephesians 4, that we come in the unity of the spirit and the unity of faith. If we want the true advancement of miracles and healing power to be worked, and that's what true advancement is going to start. That people need to understand that they need to become a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, you know, sacrifice. And you need to humble yourself before the mighty hands of God that we become less of ourselves and more of God. That it requires to become less of us. Because, you know, I tell you about these ministries, these see me ministries that see me you know, with the nice dressed up and see me saying the word of God and, you know, uh, showing my, you know, sh showing off my gifting and stuff like that. But yet you're not, you know, protesting the reality of the division that's going on in the, in the church that we're not, you know, doing that. And, and if we're not doing that, we're not advancing, we're not enhancing what we're supposed to do concerning as a church to be truly be defined as a church. We're not defined as a church according to the word of God, but according to the the ideal of what church is today, we, we consider it a church, but it's really not a church according to heaven. And what heaven put gave the instructions of Paul and Peter and everyone else. But the thing is, in true advancing, but a lot, the ideal Christian walk is about advancing others according to what the scripture says that I always will keep on, you know, coming at you with, with fellowship, fellowship, fellowship. Because fellowship is talking about coming in agreement with one another that we will come with the same mind and the same judgment. And everybody will have a better and question to understand what is all about what we perform into whatever, you know, is it about love or joy or peace and, or about these situations, about this circumstances concerning that we come in all in agreement and one accord?